Today, I'm going to tell you everything that I love and hate about this 2022 Toyota Sienna. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda. I'm standing next to this 2022 Toyota Sienna Hybrid, the minivan here. I'm actually borrowing this from a friend because I had to move some people and some things. And so this was a pretty big vehicle to do it. But now that I've had it for a day or two here, I thought I might share some of my thoughts on it. It's pretty good. And I actually overall like it. But there are some quirks and some things that I think could be improved. Let's talk about them. First of all, the color scheme is pretty nice because this is all black and looks pretty good. I'm not going to be overly critical of minivans because I just don't think that there's any way to hide the size. And if you can make a minivan that looks half attractive, which I think this one does, then good on you. It's kind of got this pointy, you know, Prius front nose here and the chrome bits around the headlights. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it looks super sporty or super attractive, right? But I don't think you get a minivan for those reasons. It's got some really big sidewalls on these tires. Now, I don't know if you can get a little more sporty tire package here, but I would say that these are pretty comfortable and that's actually probably what you want. You want to have a pretty comfortable ride on this car and on the back too, you know, it's got some, I think maybe a little bit of overdone styling here. It's kind of Lexus like you get the hybrid badge here. This is the LE, so it's not the super high end model. You get this little blue highlighting around the logo. I think that is indicating that it is a hybrid. One thing that I wish it had is just a door that would open up. I get maybe you're worried about people siphoning gas out, but if you need to open that up, you got to come here and press that button and then we'll pop this open. The other thing that I wish it would have is a capless system. I feel like that's pretty common. So you got to take the cap off there, but just being able to come to the door, popping that open and not having to remove a cap would be really nice, especially when you got other stuff going on. So, of course, inside is where everything really matters. And I wanted to quick show you what we got here because actually in many ways, I'm pretty impressed. So this is obviously what it looks like when you get in here. And if I just go ahead and jump in and we switch over to that fisheye lens, I want to show you, first of all, on this door panel right here, we get a lot of drink storage way down here. It's pretty low. There isn't a huge opening right here, but it's probably big enough for your standard water bottles. We also have this pocket right there, which I actually like so that if you have some small things, you want to put your wallets, your sunglasses, those types of things, it's right there. Now, the other thing I want to show you is we get this little tray right here. It's kind of rubberized. So it's actually soft. If you want to put coins, keys, an ID, I can definitely see you putting maybe a small cell phone or something like that in there. You've got your own little private driver's side storage bucket. Now, the door here is kind of this softer touch plastic. And I feel like this little piece here, this rib right here would probably be chrome or sewn or a leather stitched area on the higher trim. I don't know that for sure, but maybe it's not, but it looks pretty good. It's going to get this hide texture. One thing I will say is that it's pretty rounded. And when I put my arm up here and I think because this thing is going to be a cruiser, you want a place to kind of just rest your arm. It would be nice if this were just a little thicker, just to give me a little more support. I feel like it's angled and my arm is kind of always sliding down. I actually feel like the previous generation Range Rover Sports had a really flat upper sill, and I feel like that would be really comfortable. So if this were a little thicker, a little wider, I think that would be really helpful. This down here is actually nicely padded. Again, just a kind of a vinyl or something like that. Looks nice. It has some stitching. But because it's pretty wide and pretty flat, I can just put my arm there and that's pretty comfortable. Even though I have the door handle pull right there, there's nothing sticking up. And I also like that it's deep. You can really get a handle on the door and pull it shut. I hate when they're kind of short and you put your hand in there and there's not a lot to grab onto. But because this is flat all the way up here, I can actually put my hand here. I don't end up running into a handle like right here. That kind of forces me to put my hand in an awkward position. So the fact that this is mostly flat up to the mirror adjuster here is really, really nice. Nice place to put your arm. Now, the other thing I want to show you here is this finish, this material here. I'm not sure what it is. It kind of looks like a burnt or toasted bronze to me and has some, you know, streaks in it that are meant to look a little bit more like a modern wood. And if I go over here, what we get is this big flat panel and more of this material. Now, I think it's plastic, but it has kind of a metalized look to it. And I actually really, really like this. First of all, I like the fact that they have 
gone away from that waterfall design, even though in some ways this is kind of the new generation of it. But what you have this feeling of is like a big flat panel, almost like surrounding yourself with a table. And so I really like that because it's actually a nice way to do this. And it feels high. It feels like you're really hugged into your position here. And actually, when I first got in here, I thought, man, you know, what if I need to jump over to this other seat? I don't think you ever do that. But often those low consoles are what they put in minivans. And I don't think it's really necessary. This big flat space here is really nice in it. And it feels a little bit different than the other ones. I will also say there's lots of space up here to put your cell phones. I love the fact that we have a little USB port right there so we can charge your phone. There's even a little ridge here so you don't have to worry about stuff sliding too much. And I just love the look. And even this matte finish silver, it looks really good. It actually reminds me of that material that you can get on the Rolls Royces behind the passenger side glass panel there. So it doesn't scream super high quality when you tap on it or anything, but I think it just looks pretty good. And I love the fact that they've kind of gone away from some of the other design styles and they've done their own thing. In fact, the other thing that I like is that you get this kind of white off-white ivory color here and it goes all the way through the middle. You get the darker up here so that you don't get that reflection. But what I love about this is it keeps this a little brighter so I can see what's down there. If you make this all black, it actually is kind of hard to see what's in there. So I dig that. A couple of things in here that I don't really like or at least confuse me, maybe I don't hate them, is that we have two cup holders right here and they're pretty nice, they're big, they're always open. They actually look fairly attractive too. We even have the little tabs in there to kind of center drinks, but we also have two more cup holders right here. Now that's actually okay. There's this little trough in the front here. So I'm really not sure if you're supposed to put things here. I have actually used this for the phone a little bit so you can put your phone up here. The problem is, is it's so far back, you can't really see your phone, okay? And we also have a compartment here for storage. So you do get a big compartment there. So it's nicely covered up here. So it doesn't look bad and it actually doesn't look like cup holders, but I'm not sure why we have two cup holders here and two cup holders here and cup holders, obviously, as I said, down in the doors here. So in terms of having adequate beverages for the two people in the front, as far as I can tell, you could put three water bottles on either door, two here and two here. So you could have 10 drinks available to the drivers. Little overkill, I think. You probably want to make sure that everyone in the back has drinks. So the other thing that I am a little confused about is this little slot right here clearly looks like it is for cell phones. And my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits in there side to side. The problem is up here, it sticks up and will lean against these buttons right here. And so what ends up happening is that it's standing vertical and it kind of wants to flop forward. This would actually be a great place to have my phone in terms of me being able to see something. So if I don't have it paired to the head unit, you know, you're not using CarPlay or something and you're just using the navigation, that makes a ton of sense to have it right there. However, it seems like a miss when it's either not deep enough or not forward enough of the controls for a phablet type of phone, because I feel like the Pro Max is kind of your standard size phone now. Having a five and a half inch to six inch screen is kind of standard. And the way it is set up here, it doesn't really allow for that. Now, if you have a smaller phone where it can lean back like this, that would be great. And it doesn't seem to have wireless charging or anything like that. So it seems like you could have a bigger back here, kind of move it forward a little bit, maybe even just lose this cup holder entirely and maybe even have it swivel or something. That might be pretty cool so that I could swivel it towards me or towards a passenger and have wireless charging in it. But the way it sits right there, I'm not sure what kind of phone that is for. It's got to be a pretty small one. And then if you do have a pretty small one, it's going to flop around in there a lot. So anyway, just kind of my quirks of the center console. Overall, I really love the look, but seems like, hey, I've got space. Let's throw in some more cup holders. It's kind of what I feel like happened. So the other thing I want to mention here are kind of quality of materials. And the first thing is, because this is the lower end version, this is not a leather wrapped steering wheel, but it's probably one of the best feeling non-leather steering wheels I've ever felt. You don't feel a molding mark. You know, maybe they've kind of cut that down. You can see where the two pieces kind of come together right there, but I don't feel it. That's kind of a dead giveaway that it's a lower run steering wheel. This feels pretty good. It's a little smooth. It's a little slippery. That may be from the hand polishing and the oils over time, just driving it. But when I get into a car and grab the steering wheel, it's the first thing you feel. It's the thing you feel all the time. And many times I get in there, I feel like it's plastic. It feels really hard. It doesn't have the right texture. This feels pretty good. 
In fact, I actually didn't recognize it as a non-leather steering wheel for a while until I started thinking about like, what do I like and not like about this car? And so that's actually pretty nice. This airbag cover is probably a similar material. Now I want to go over here to the shifter because I actually really love the shifter for a number of reasons. First of all, it's actually pretty wide. I mean, it's only maybe two and a half inches wide here, but in terms of putting my hand on something, it feels pretty good because it's so wide. I like those wide handle like shifters. The original Hummer H2s came with a really wide shifter too, but then we kind of went to these really thin shifters a lot. So I like the fact that it's wide. It could even be a little wider and I'd actually like that, but it feels really good. Now, the material that they've used here is kind of like a softer rubber, has that same texture up here, but I actually like the feeling of this. Now, it just might be that this doesn't get touched that much and it might be the same material that's on the steering wheel. And so it just has a little bit of a grippier, softer, more matte finish just because it doesn't get used a whole lot. But I actually really love the feel of this. I wouldn't also mistake this for leather, but it just feels nice in the hand and it feels pretty robust. It's got this nice boot here, so it feels nicely protected. Now, actually, it's not as space efficient as just having the buttons like park, reverse, neutral, all that. You could just put buttons. A lot of people are just putting buttons up on the center console. So this takes up more real estate, but I like this. That feels pretty good in the hand. All right, the other thing I wanna show you here is the material that comes on the seat because in fact, it's actually pretty nice. It kind of has a little bit of this houndstooth like cloth material in the middle. Obviously, if this were the higher end, I think it would be perforated, stitched, quilted leather. Oh, it feels so good on the naked body. The outsides though, where the bolsters are, are kind of a little bit too much of that low rent cloth material where you can see the weave of it just doesn't feel as high quality as like the centerpiece. I wish it were maybe even a leatherette or something like that, because that's not going to really touch your body a lot, but maybe it would just give it a, a little bit of a higher end look. But this inner material here actually looks pretty nice and it feels pretty good. I will say if you are driving on a long cruise, a long distance road trip, you want cloth seats. I'm just saying you want the breathability and the comfort and the no squeakiness of cloth. And it's one of the reasons that we sleep on cloth sheets in bed and not leather sheets. Unless you're like me, I do sleep on leather sheets. Oh yeah. Uh, you just wake up in your own sweat, which is really nice. Okay. The other thing that I want to show you here is this head unit and it's pretty good. It's actually tilted. It might be a little hard to see, but it's actually tilted probably 10 degrees towards me. It's kind of one of those things that's really hard for cars to figure out because either you want to put them really far back so the passenger has a good view, but then it's really hard to touch. Or if they're this close, and this is a touchscreen, you know, if I were to go up here to audio and uh, let's go to reorder so you can see it's touchscreen, but I didn't connect my phone because I didn't want to screw up my buddy's car. But one of the things that it does nicely, it's an easy reach for me and it's very easy reach for the passenger. The problem is once you get it this close, the issue is how do you tilt it so that everyone can see it? And in some cases, I'm thinking maybe you will have two screens moving forward, a screen like this. And then a screen like that for the passenger or a screen over there for the passenger. And maybe you just make it really driver focused because even though it's tilted towards me a little bit, it's not a really natural angle to look at a screen, but they do a pretty good job of it. And it's kind of out of the way here and it looks nice, even though it's just a plastic housing. I actually don't mind these kind of floating screens because they actually look pretty good. The backup camera does have lines, but they don't move, which is a little disappointing, especially just given the size of this car. And sometimes you want a little bit of help, especially when you're backing this thing, doing a little tactical parking so that you can get this big beast out of a parking spot. So sometimes just having the trajectory lines that move a little bit is really helpful in a bigger car. I'm surprised that they're missing here, to be honest, but it's not a bad camera. It just is kind of missing those moving lines. The controls down here, you've got physical controls for HVAC. You've got auto on there. I actually like that. I hate when they're all disappeared on you into the electronics. So the fact that we have that is really nice. And obviously this layered kind of dashboard stacks on top of that lower portion. And even the materials up here, pretty good. This is a hard, hard plastic, like a Fisher Price plastic, but it doesn't look bad. And until you tap it or touch it, it doesn't really look bad. Now, the one thing that after driving this a little while, and it's a weird thing for me to complain about, and I don't want to get into all the details of everything, but it's this, the door handles right here. So what you can see is that this is a plastic door handle, kind of this cheap 
off-white plastic. And it's one of those weird things to me where I touch the steering wheel, I touch the door handle, and this is where kind of quality of a car gets communicated to you through touch. I'm not going to touch the upper dash a lot. This only has to really look good. It doesn't have to feel good. This almost has to feel good. And it's really light. The spring load on it is very light. And so it feels almost like I'm going to break it. Now, obviously no one's going to break it, but it just feels like if this were this color, this kind of satin silver, which is also plastic, that's not metal, by the way, that's plastic. Then it would kind of exude a little more luxury to me. Or if it had that heavy metal, you know, finish to it, where it was like a chrome door handle, that would be nice. The other thing I was thinking of is if you actually had put this finish, like this brown burnt bronze finish on there so that it looked like a piece of this as well, that would be kind of cool because I don't need it to look silver. I don't need it to look silver to convey quality or luxury. But if it were just something like this, which would be unique and give it just a little bit of extra pop, Man, that would go a long way in my opinion. Now, I'm sure on the upper trims of the Sienna, you know, you get real metal door handles. But in terms of the lower end, I feel like, man, they could have just thrown those in. And it's one of those things where I would feel like I'm in a higher end car overall. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for this one. Obviously, we have the controls like you would expect for the side doors up on the top here. And there is a little SOS service. I'm not sure how that works for two. I'm sure you have to register. But what they do have, there's a little pop down mirror here. I really like these because you want to be able to see kids in the back. Maybe you have young kids, toddlers, infants, those types of things. It's a nice, easy way to kind of keep an eye on it without having to put other mirrors. So I actually really like this. Now, one thing I will say is it's very small. It's like an inch tall. And so while it's not very big, it does work. And because it's pretty aggressively curved, I can still see everything. My only issue with this is I'm not a tall, tall guy, but I'm not a short guy, five, seven, five, eight. So I am sitting here in the car where I would normally sit. Now, if I just turn my head, it's going to be a little hard. I'm going to put the camera right up to my face and turn and look at that. I'm just going to kind of go in on it. What you can see here is that it's not that easy to see all the seats, right? I wish the mirror piece would wrap a little further around over here and be a little thicker over here. That would give me a little bit more, I think, usable view. It's not horrible. And for as small as it is, it's kind of a good trade-off, I think. But if it were a little more driver-focused or passenger-focused too, if you have a spouse or someone else sitting in the passenger seat that wants to watch, I just feel like this could be improved a little bit. It's probably not Toyota's fault. It's probably industry standard, but you could probably just make it a little bit bigger field of view, I think. Now let's talk about the back seats here. There's not a lot to go over here. You're probably pretty familiar with the Siennas and minivans in general. What you can see here is that this one has this kind of middle bonus seat. So ironically, two people in the front, three people in the middle, and three people in the back. This can carry eight people. So in terms of a people carrier, this is actually probably one of the best cars that you can have. Now, I'm actually not a big fan of these middle seats because I think a lot of people kind of get in and then use the middle as the pass through to get into the back. And so having this is probably something that if you have a normal size family or carpoint, you're probably not going to need this much. Now this does come out as far as I know, I don't want to take it out because it's my buddy's car here, but if you don't need it and you don't really carry a lot of people, then you can probably just pull that guy out. The materials on the seats are the same and that's actually pretty nice. because These middle seats are actually pretty comfortable, but this is where my first complaint comes in is that I am kind of used to some of the Chrysler products. A lot of my friends have had town and countries and the stow and go seating is pretty nice. This does not stow and go. The seats do move out of the way. You can definitely use this to haul stuff, but it doesn't get quite as cargo-y as some of the other minivans. Let me show you. All right. One of the things that you are probably curious about, and I certainly am, is obviously the interior here is pretty cavernous. You can hold probably a couple thousand pounds of people in gear. It's not big enough to hold your mama, but to hold as much stuff as possible, we want to get the seats moved, and I'm not entirely sure how to do it. Looks like these front ones are on rails, so it looks like, to me, all we could do is just move these forward. And so what it looks like is if you lift this up like this, kind of collapses up like that, and then I have this piece here and can then move this thing forward and back. And I don't think you necessarily have to collapse this or clamshell this to 
move that, but that gives you a lot of access to the back here. Now, obviously, that is not going to be cargo friendly. So, looks like right there, these pivots. So, I'm going to try to go ahead and just see what needs to be done to do that. So, if I pull on this, okay, that falls down. If I pull on this one, looks like that one falls down too. So, let's go ahead and get to the back. Okay, so if I go ahead and pull this now. Oh, kind of cantilevers in. I thought it was going to just totally pivot into the back. But if I pull it like this, now you can see now, all right, those are down. So what I get here is probably about five and a half, maybe six feet from door to those seats. I will also say there's a button blank right here where if you had the automatic closing door or opening door, you would push that, but it doesn't. It's not just on a hydraulic, so. All right, that's all well and good. The car is a nice little piece of hardware, but how does it drive? Let's take it on the road and find out. All right, one thing I wanna show you is we have a power button down here and obviously foot on the brake, press the power button to fire this up. But because it's hybrid, the engine hasn't started. It's pretty quiet. You can hear the vents going and obviously the beeping here, but what you won't get is the little kind of comforting sound of a engine starter and so it can be a little hard sometimes to know that you're in drive you know just like any electric car and it's the same thing when you come to a stop you'll come to a stop and it'll sound like this and there won't be any sound you know cars with auto start stop are the same deal but the one time it actually kind of confuses me is sometimes you're coming to a stop you're parking the car you put the car in park like this and it feels like it's off and if I let off the brake here and open the door, I want to show you, like I forget that it's off. Oh, there it is. The sign just came on. Let's see if I can show you here. The vehicle will automatically turn off if parked for one hour. So you can actually rest a little easy knowing that, did I actually turn it off? Hit the power button? If not, it'll turn off on its own. The fact that it stays on an hour, I don't know, is good. Maybe if you have like kids or a dog and you're running inside and you want the car to stay cool. It's kind of nice for passengers, I guess, so that you don't have to leave the car running. And it's also comforting knowing that it'll turn it off. But I have done this a couple of times where I put it in park and thought, oh, the car's off. Didn't even dawn on me to hit the button one more time. So just something that you want to keep in mind. The one thing I will say is that you really have to pull this all the way back to get into drive. I have inadvertently sometimes here gone ahead and grabbed this and pulled it back to what I thought was drive, but it was really neutral. You can see it comes back pretty far, but you actually have to kind of pull it back almost to the point where your wrist is hitting the console here. And so it doesn't feel super natural to do it. And actually right up here where my fingers are, you start to lose grip when you hit your hand that far back. So to be honest, this neutral position feels like where drive should be a little bit, but you get used to it. You just kind of pull it all the way back. Kind of one of those weird things that it feels unnatural at the beginning, all right? On the highway, she's pretty good. A little buffeting, buffeting, buffeting. But it's just because it's really windy here in the Midwest at the moment. But she's nice and smooth. I've actually got some stuff, some boxes in the back that aren't tied down. So they're just on the floor. And I was worried about them kind of sliding around a little bit. But so far, no issue with it. So I haven't heard them go, shh, shh. You know how they would probably slide back and forth, but this has been really nice. You know, it's actually pretty flat here at the turns. I've been driving it around the residential areas quite a bit, actually driving through Chicago where the streets are pretty narrow. And for a big car, she does fit through stuff. I also like the fact that this has the big wheels. They don't look that cool or anything, but I have noticed here, especially on cracks in the road, potholes, and in the city of Chicago, they have some massive speed bumps. So not kind of those one foot long ones. I mean, they're kind of like little humps, you know, they're probably three feet wide. And so you have to actually drive over them. And the long wheelbase without a lot of clearance can sometimes be a problem, but this handled them pretty nicely. So no problems, no bottoming out or anything like that. And everything stayed very stable. Now I could have tied stuff down in the back too. That probably would help, but like I said, I'm actually pretty impressed with how smooth this is. Now, from the standpoint of 
ride quality, it's pretty good. There is probably a little bit more road noise that I was expecting, given the fact that this thing is a hybrid, but it's about average. It's not bad. Uh, I wouldn't call it awesome, but I feel like I could have a conversation in this car with at least the person sitting next to me. The people in the back would probably be a little ways back to be able to have a easy conversation with, but you wouldn't have to shout or be unpleasant. I definitely have some cars where having a conversation in them is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. So drives nice, drives flat. It picks up and goes kind of like any other car that you'd expect. So I have no problems with the pickup. It doesn't seem like super torquey or anything like that, but it seems totally adequate. And it's actually pretty pleasant to drive. I mean, other than some of the ergonomics, you know, most of them are pretty good, but it's exactly what you should want and expect out of a minivan. If I had to do a long, long road trip, then this would definitely be the one I'd want because it's pretty comfortable. So honestly, even on a daily commute as a daily driver, other than it being pretty large and maybe a little unwieldy to park in some of the tight spots, but you're sitting up high. It's very spacious in here. I kind of dig that, dude. It feels pretty nice. If the car stopped right behind my seat, so it was like a smart car, but it was probably twice as wide as it is long, then this would be even more comfortable. Ride quality would probably suffer. You don't want to have a short wheelbase car like that, but pretty comfortable. All right, guys. So 2022 Toyota Sienna. This is kind of the minivan that everyone wants because everyone wants Toyota reliability. It's pretty nice. It gets pretty good mileage. It has some of the quirks that I don't really like. Kind of these middle seats of what you can do with them is kind of a little bit limiting. As far as I can tell, at least compared to some of the other minivans that I would be considering, I don't really love the gas cap, not a big deal, or the door handles, but I really love this interior in the front here. It's definitely unique. It feels quite a bit different than the other minivans, and it actually feels like a step up over a lot of the other cars. It definitely has a more luxury feel, and I think it's this, like I said, bronze type of finish that they have on that center console. So I really like this car. In fact, if I were going to have a minivan, this would definitely be in consideration. I would say that the only thing that really would stop me from getting this is that these middle seats don't really get out of the way. The fact that I could get a minivan where the seats fold completely into the floor, where I could absolutely load something that's eight, nine feet long into the back, man, that's kind of a big deal. So unless you really are going to use your car for making runs to, oh, Home Depot is the example everyone uses. But, you know, there are some times when you're just moving luggage or taking someone and dropping them off at school or going on vacation and taking some equipment with you. Or to be really honest, I was thinking about getting the minivan and using it to do a little van life experience and camp along the way and just have one side of the van's seats fold into the floor. So I'd get a nice flat area, put a little platform, a cot in there, something like that, sleep right on the floor. You'd have a full flat floor where you could just lay down and actually use. But in this car, you're going to always kind of have some sacrifices there. So if you want to pick up a Toyota Sienna, I think you'll like it. I think it's a nice place to be, but if you really need something that's going to be a cargo carrier on top of a minivan, then you might want to keep looking around. But otherwise, I'm going to keep driving this around and go racing with it. Sorry, buddy. That's what happens when you loan your car to me. Until we check out the next minivan, Peter Von Panda, out.